How you doing guys? Today we're going to be tying the Lefty Deceiver. A uh, very good bait fish fly. Used everywhere that on fish that eat uh, other fish, other bait fish. Uh, we'll be using white bucktail, a little chartreuse, some pink for the throat, some good old feathers here to make a long profile, mono thread, some peacock curl for the back. Uh, for the hooks, we're going to use the Gamagatsu Executive Series B10S, the stingers, um, some 3D eyes, some CCG UV resin, and of course, a little bit of the, this little flash here. Uh, let's see how it looks. Alright, so let's tie the mono along the shank here with the hook. And we're gonna get some of this saddle hackle. Uh, tie it on. I like to tie on two feathers on each side uh, with the concave facing into the hook. So it creates like a little cup effect in inside the actual shank. Um, also keeps it st more streamlined looking of the hook. In the water they come alive, they move around, they have their own life. So in total it's four. Sometimes I use six if I'm going to tie a bigger fly. But since this fly is only uh, six inches, it's fine with four. Alright, so now after the feathers have been tied, I like to tie on four strands of uh, flash. Two strands on each side. And <laughs> that's the girlfriend running behind me. <laughs> and you tighten them nice and tight. Then I take uh, some white bucktail, start creating the belly of the, of the fly. Um, I like to use about halfway up the shank with white bucktail, then I start adding color towards when I reach the halfway up to the head. Um, a lot of people like, like to start from, from the back using chartreuse or green or olive for the back. I like to most of it white. So now make sure it's nice and even. Again, you see I use my nails. I figure just to make sure it's nice and laid out nice and even. After I got that done, I use my scissors, or you could, if you have tools to separate the hair and see if they split them nice between the hook. Color more white now for the top. Tie that in. Make sure it doesn't pass the feathers. You want a nice taper on that. Your feathers and your flash should be the longest part of the back of the fly. Again, this is this fly is great for many species of fish from fresh water to salt water. So after you tie those on See right around here now, from here on out, I know for the top I'm going to start using color. So I'm going to create a little bit more of the belly. So 
that color a bit more because I don't want to make it the same length as the previous uh, tie down hair already. And again, I want that tapered look so it gradually um, thins out as it reaches towards the tail. Always make sure when you, you spin the vise around, make sure the fly all around is nice and even. Now start adding your chartreuse. Believe me, the chartreuse goes a long way. You're going to see just one, one clump. It's going to look like half the fly is all chartreuse. Just the contrast between the white and the chartreuse enough fish, I believe, hone on that and going for the kill. See, since this is not my the last material I'll tie, I'm not gonna tie it all the way up to the eye for the hook. I'll keep going. You start to realize now the taper of the fly is coming along now. Now I need a little bit more of the throat now. Tie it more white and then some pink to the fly. Usually a big issue with this fly is how much material you use. You don't need that much bucktail or that much uh, feathers or flash. Really a little goes a long way. And unless you're going for something particular with a lot of profile and you put a bit more, but you'll notice that I'm not putting that much material on it, but it's going a long way. Now I position it where I want it. Lock it in. I'm trying to fix the, the lighting issue. <laughs> All right. So now I use a little pink for the throat. Like I said in my previous video, uh, if you don't use pink in the actual body of the fly, you can always use the throat pink or red. Red works well too. Um, I just prefer pink and I have a big old pink uh, tail here so all you need is a little bit about half an inch maybe not even of throat pink it's just enough that you can see it the reason you're pulling a color on a throat uh, shows a fish a big fish in distress uh, sorry for oxygen or just not in optimal uh, health so a striped bass will see that and he will think it is easy kill since the fish can't run, can't swim fast enough to get out of the way. See, I some peacock curl on the back, about eight strands. Again, in the water, that this lays a lot different than it looks now because it all starts to fall into place. As long as if you hold your fly together and you see a taperness to it, your fly will swim that way. Uh, 
All right, now I'm tying two pieces of flash on each side to create the lateral lines to the fly. Some people are big into using flash. I don't, obviously I don't put as much as some other people. It doesn't help or doesn't hinder you. Some people think it does, some people think it doesn't. It's all up to you. You can use as much flash as you want. For me, sometimes I prefer more flash on darker flies, on uh, black and purple, since you're trying to call attention in a certain kind of water. So I inspect the fly now, see if everything's all good. I noticed that the back hackle could use some adjusting. Okay. Now to put on some eyes, the 3D eyes. Now these eyes I get from uh, Fly Tying Dungeon. Uh, pretty inexpensive. About a dollar fifty for forget how many, but you get quite a few. Uh, it's not bad. Um, and with with the CCG, it holds pretty well. I know crazy glue sometimes I just plop off if you cast too hard or you hit something. With the resin, it holds a couple more hits. So now you just add the CCG so it's nice and even, just right to the eye, behind the eye. Uh, make sure it's nice, spread and even. This is also the time you can use the resin in your favor to lay down some material if you wanted to. Alright. You start realizing if you use resin, the resin starts to sink into the hair, which is fine. That means you got to come back and touch it up, and then when you're ready, you hit it with the resin. Make sure the eyes and the fly are even. Uh, I've noticed sometimes I cure it, and I realize the eye is crooked. The fly looks completely crooked. If you notice, I put the vise on a straight angle, um, and I use it as a reference to see how straight the fly looks, and I see the eye angles. You see me do that quite a bit, just to make sure that when I cast this fly and I bring it back, it swims as straight as possible and as upright. Um, I'm not sure if fish really notice that, I don't know if they care, it's just a personal preference. So yeah, I notice that one eye starts to droops down a little bit, pick it up. And look, there it is. Then you cure it. And that's basically it, that's the uh, lefty deceiver. Uh, probably one of the first flies I tied for salt water. Productive, pretty good, especially when beta are, are that size, are sw swimming about. We'll produce fish. Alright guys.